Let's solve the uh, second order differential equation y double prime of t plus 2y prime of t plus y of t equals 4e to the t using a variation of parameters and then using undetermined coefficients. So let's start by using the variation of parameters method. So the very first thing that I'm going to do regardless of the method is to solve the homogeneous equation. So basically to um, rewrite the equation um, the left hand side completely the way it is and then to set it equal to zero. This makes it a homogeneous equation. So now the auxiliary equation is r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 0. And we know how to solve this one. You can use quadratic formula or you can um, use the perfect square. So r equals negative 1. It's a repeated solution. What does that mean? It means that the general solution is equal to c1 e to negative t plus c2 t e to negative t, right? Because when it repeats, we have to make sure we introduce this term t. We talked about it when we had that um, lesson. Now, e to negative t because of this uh, r. So this is the solution of the homogeneous um, equation. So we keep this information handy because we are going to uh, need it in the future. So I'm just going to highlight this and keep an eye on it. I might come back to it. Now, once we found the uh, general solution, this also helps us figure out the shape of the particular solution. So uh, y p of t, the particular solution, is going to have the form v1 of t e to negative t plus v2 of t times t e to negative t. So basically, using the general solution, every time I saw the constant c1, I actually replaced it with a formula, with a formula, uh, with a function uh, v1 of t, and then when c2 showed up, then I replace it with a function of t. This is the uh, procedure for variation of parameters. So now, the next thing would be to actually get the uh, y of p of t, the derivative, the second derivative, replace them into the equation and uh, set them equal to each other. But we are going to skip those steps because we know that the solutions or uh, the system of equation that is going to help us find v1 and v2 has the form v1 prime of t e to negative t plus v2 prime of t times t e to negative t equals 0. Again, this was discussed in the lecture. And v1 prime of t, the derivative of e to negative t, which is negative e to negative t, plus v2 prime of t, times the derivative of t e to negative t, which means e to negative t minus t e to negative t. Basically, uh, the product rule between these two. Equals, well, it's equal to whatever function we had in our equation, this function, divided by the leading coefficient, which was 1, so it's 4e to the t. If it was a different value, then we would have that specific, so 4e to the t. So it's divided by 1. But if the leading coefficient was a t or something here, then we would divide by that. So now we have this system of equation which we can um, solve. So the way we solve a system of equations when at this level we should use Kramer's rule. So Kramer's rule says let's create a determinant by the coefficient of the unknown values. So let's not forget we want to find v1 prime and we want to find v2 prime. That's our goal. So let's create a determinant made by the coefficient of these two functions. So v1 prime and v1 prime here and let's color code them v2 prime and v2 prime. So the rest of them are the coefficients of um, delta. So e to negative t, negative e to negative t, t e to negative t, and I'm also going to factor out e to negative t. And this is uh, delta. So when we compute it, we actually end up with 1 minus t e to negative 2t minus, well, plus 
uh, t e to negative 2t. So if we open up the parentheses, we end up with e to negative 2t as our delta. Now delta v1 prime is given by replacing the column of v1 prime of the coefficient, so basically the first column, by the column of the um, terms on the right hand side. So basically it's going to be 0 for e to the t and then the, the second column stays the same, 1 minus t, e to negative t, and when we solve this we actually end up with 4t, um, well, e to 0. So we get just 4t. So if you forgot the way we calculate a 2 by 2 determinant, it's AD minus BC. This is the formula. So let's calculate delta V2 prime. So what does that mean? Well, in delta, the first column stays the same, but the second column uh, the column of v2 prime, it's uh, replaced by the purple numbers, the numbers on the left side. So 0, 40 to the t, or functions. And when we compute it, we actually end up with 4. So now, v1 prime is defined as delta v1 prime over delta. We are using Kramer's rule. This is what we're doing now. So it's 4t over e to negative 2t. So basically it's 4t e to 2t. So V1, don't forget, we found V1 prime. So V1 of t, it's integral of 4t e to 2t dt. And this integral can be calculated using integration by parts. So pause here and try to integrate by parts on your own. So let's try to solve it together. Um, remember that integration by parts looks something like this integral of u du dv integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du. So in our case, um, let's figure out what is our u and our, what is our um, dv first, right? So uh, between the two t and e to 2t, um, if we choose as our dv t, uh, in order to get v, we're going to integrate, so we're going to get t squared. So we are increasing the power of t. We don't want that, so we'll get we choose u to be t because when we differentiate it, it, um, it brings down the power of t. And then dv, it's e to 2t dt. So v, it's integral of e to 2t dt, which is e to 2t over 2. So using the formula that I wrote above, um, v1 of t, it's 4 times, let's not forget the 4, it's uv, so it's t e to 2t over 2 minus integral of v e to 2t over 2 d um, u, which is dt. So we get 2t e to 2t minus 2 times, well, integral of e to 2t, it's e to 2t over 2. And we get 2t e to 2t minus e to 2t. You might say, where is the plus the constant? Well, for this particular lesson, we don't add the constant just to simplify our computations. Um, now, the same procedure, v2 prime is delta v2 prime over delta. Now, delta v2 was computed to be 4, and delta was e to negative 2t, so we end up with 4 e to 2t. So, v2 of t is going to be integral of 4 e to 2 t dt. 4 comes outside and integral of e to 2 t is e to 2 t over 2. We get 2 e to 2 t. So we found that v1 of t is equal to 2 t e to 2 t minus e to 2 t and v2 of t is 2 e to 2 t. Why do we want this? because our particular solution was written in, form, uh, in uh, terms of this function. Actually, our particular solution was v1 of t times, let's see, what did we say? Um, let's color code it with uh, purple. Our particular solution was v1 e to negative 2t plus v2 t e to negative t. So basically, 
v1 t to negative t plus v2 of t t e to negative t so if we do the math i'm going to multiply v1 which is this one by e to negative t so we get 2t e to the t minus e to the t plus now v2 times t to uh, negative t it's 2t e to the t and um let's see i just realized i made a mistake here so when we calculate delta v1 prime so this one we we'll calculate this it's these two minus these two so i'm supposed to have a minus here which is going to change this one so i'm going to have this minus four um so it's going to be minus four so it's minus two t and then plus that so minus plus sorry about that so when we multiply now it's going to be minus plus these two cancel and we end up only with e to the t so our particular solution is just e to the t so basically the solution of the whole equation is the general solution plus the particular solution so we have c1 e to negative um t plus c2 t e to negative t plus e to the t this is the solution of our um, equation now if we have initial solution initial conditions we can calculate c1 and c2 of course we will need two initial conditions okay now let's take a look at the same problem but with the second method so method two so undetermined coefficient for y double prime plus 2y prime plus y equals 4 e to the t. Let's not forget we already used the uh, auxiliary equation and we ended up with, from auxiliary equation, we ended up with r equals negative 1, which we used here at the exponent. So because r was negative 1 and it didn't have anything in common with this one, right, the coefficient in front of t, then we can assume that our particular solution has the form a e to the t so in order to find it we are going to do y prime of t which is a e to the t y double prime of t and it's a to a times e to the t replace all of them into this equation star and obtain a e to the t plus 2 a e to the t plus a e to the t equals 4 e to the t so basically 4a e to the t equals 4e to the t, which means 4a equals 4 or a equals 1. So basically, the particular solution is actually e to the t. Very interesting, because we did obtain the same thing using the variation of parameters. We still got the same thing. Now you might wonder why we had to do all the work for variation of parameters when we could have done the undetermined coefficients very easily. Well, because not all the time the functions to the right are such easy, pretty ones like 4e to the t. Sometimes they can be uh, tangents that I, we don't know exactly what a particular solution will look like. We can have t to negative exponents. So it's good to understand variation of parameters for easy um, problems so that you can uh, you can use it for more complicated uh, functions i hope this helps